Hello, welcome to another video. Welcome to episode two of Cover to Cover, the search for the best indie bookshop. I started this as a series to celebrate a love of independent bookshops and a love of books, and hopefully to just be a little bit of fun along the way. This is a 10 episode series spanning across 10 months in 2023, in which I am visiting 10 different independent bookshops. I will be showing you each independent bookshop in those vlogs. I will also be buying one bookseller recommendation from each bookshop, or at least one. <laughs> probably more, definitely one book from each bookshop and also reading and reviewing that book in these vlogs as well. If you've already watched episode one you will already know all of this but just to explain very briefly each bookshop gets an opportunity to earn 25 possible points and then in December I'm going to look back at all of these bookshops as a whole and see which ones come out on top. The 25 points come from five different categories with five points available in each what are these categories, I hear you asking? Well, they are atmosphere, staff recommendations, shop layout, book selection, and a final bonus five points will be given depending on the rating out of five I give the book that I bought based on the bookseller recommendation. So there's basically four different things I'm going to be looking out for when I'm in the bookshop itself, which will be the first part of this vlog, and then the second part will be the reading vlog, where I give the final potential five points and see what this bookshop gets out of 25. The bookshop that I'm going to be visiting today is Pigeon Books in South Sea near Portsmouth. This looks like such a beautiful bookshop. I've been chatting to the owner on the phone and it sounds like a really lovely space. I absolutely love the look of it. It's South Sea's only independent bookshop and it stocks new fiction, queer lit and diverse children's books. So I'm very excited to have a little look around. I'm going tomorrow, so I'm starting this video a little bit early just so I get ahead of myself and don't feel like I'm too rushed tomorrow morning. But I will, of course, be asking for a recommendation when I'm there. Now, I'm kind of fancying some kind of fast paced, thrillery, high stakes tension type of book at the moment. So I think I might go in saying that's what I fancy, but generally as well, when I'm asking for a recommendation, I just like to say what kind of books I enjoy reading and see if the bookseller's got anything that they think would be perfect for me. So I'm really excited to see what book I end up buying and if I end up buying more, because I definitely did that when I visited Blue Bear Bookshop in Farnham, which was episode one of this series. If you do wanna check that out, I will link the video above. I'm gonna be going with my friend Immy from Mythic Reader, who also came with me to Blue Bear Bookshop. I will leave her Instagram link down below, but she has such a beautiful Instagram page. She is Mythic Reader on Instagram. If you do want to check her out, I would highly recommend it. So we're going to be heading along together tomorrow. I'm really looking forward to it. The fact that it's a seaside town as well, I'm really hoping that we have lovely sunny weather. I'm also kind of craving some fish and chips, so hopefully we can do that. So let's go to South Sea and see what we think of Pigeon Books. It's a little bit rainy out today. I'm hoping this goes away because Obviously this is a seaside town, it would be great to be able to see it in the sun. The sun's come out! Yay! Just in time to leave as well.
pigeon book, pigeon. Hello, I return from South Sea, South, South, South Sea slash Portsmouth. I've been to Portsmouth before, I've never been to South Sea. Driving into it was an interesting experience. I, I think we were questioning <laughs> our location choice as we were driving in, but once we got into where the bookshop was, there was quite a few indie shops around. There was a couple of vintage shops, there was a couple of games theme shops, and then of course there was Pigeon Books, which is what we were there to see. So, how did the bookshop experience go? Pigeon Books is a really lovely small indie bookshop within South Sea. It's very easy to be able to view the whole bookshop from any point in the bookshop, so it's quite easy to see the range of stock on offer. As I think I said yesterday, there's a slight lean towards new fiction, towards queer lit, and towards diverse children's books. There was a really lovely little corner in the corner of this bookshop, obviously it was in the corner, that was dedicated to a little children's section with a little chair, and it was kind of like a little reading nook. There was also a little reading nook for adults as well, and that was really nicely decorated. The whole vibe of the shop felt very fitting for the town. It had a kind of modern graffiti style in places to it, like there was some beautiful artwork up on the walls, it felt quite urban in places, and I just think it worked really well for the vibe that this bookshop was giving off. I asked why it was called Pigeon Books, and the owner said there wasn't any deep meaning behind it, and they just thought it, it worked well, and kind of went with the bird theme that some publishing houses have, and I, I do think it, it works well. It was a nice atmosphere that was fueled by the occasional pigeon, <laughs> obviously not real pigeons, but there was artwork and little models and things, so I, I thought it worked really well, it was really cute. So the atmosphere of the shop, which is the first thing we will be rating it on, I think it had a really nice atmosphere. There was music playing, but it wasn't too distracting. The vibe in there felt very welcoming. The bookseller was very welcoming as well, and it just generally felt like a place that we wanted to spend time in. I love when bookshops have chairs, I just think it's a great way to invite people to be able to spend a bit more time looking over those books, as long as people aren't cheeky and literally just sit and read a whole book whilst they're there, but in a bookshop this size I think it would be very difficult to get away with that. But I think that it, it shows that it's a welcoming space and it also gives people the option if they do need to sit down more often to be able to do that. So I like that it had that and I felt like it was a really safe pleasant environment, which means that I gave it a 4 out of 5 for atmosphere. Staff recommendations, I bought some books, I will show you what they are in a minute, but the staff recommendations, so I went in, I think I said I was going to say that I was kind of in the mood for something quite fast paced, something thrillery, horrory maybe, and the bookseller said that they didn't read as much fiction as they did non-fiction, but then proceeded to give me literally loads of recommendations, so I was really impressed. They were pulling off books to start with that we actually had both enjoyed, some Grady Hendrix for example, and then once they got a little bit of a grasp of my taste, after we had a bit of a chat about Neil Gaiman as well, they then pulled off a couple that I'd never heard of, which was really cool. So there were two that they pulled off that I'd never heard of, and out of one of them I bought one of those, and then there was another one that I had seen about the place but hadn't really looked into too much, and I bought that one as well, which again I will tell you about in a minute. But generally I think the bookseller knowledge was pretty strong, especially with them saying they didn't really read as much fiction as they did non-fiction, they then proceeded to give me loads of recommendations, which are hopefully good recommendations. So I gave this a 5 out of 5. Shop layout was pretty good here, it was quite a small shop space, but I think that the, the booksellers had done such a fantastic job of laying out in a way that didn't make it feel too cramped. There was a kind of aisle unit thing in the middle that had books on it that were facing outwards and then stacked below, and then there were also shelves on the other surrounding walls. I'm doing a great job at describing it, but you'll have seen it in the footage. So I think that was a really well organised space. I, I feel like that's that was a, the natural kind of path that the space could take as well with the kind of size that you've got available. There was quite a few people in at one point and it never felt cramped, it always felt like there was room to move around and each aisle space was pretty wide, so everything felt like it was fairly accessible and was easy to manoeuvre around and could fit lots of people in it. So I gave it a 4.5 for shop layout. Book selection. I am very wary that the bookshops so far, the two, that I've gone to in this video are certainly quite small and generally indies do lean on the smaller scale, or at least the ones that I'm currently in the middle of looking at for this video. So I'm very wary that that means that the selection isn't, you know, I can't go comparing this to something like Waterstones or Blackwells, it just isn't going to have that scale, which is totally fine because that's not what I'm expecting from it. But what I'm kind of thinking about when I think about the, the selection available 
is just the range. Like if obviously if I'm going to a specific themed bookshop I accept that you know like for example if it was a sci-fi fantasy themed bookshop obviously we're going to be sci-fi fantasy based. However if it's just a bookshop that isn't specific on the genre then does it have a decent range? And yes this bookshop did. There was a really good amount of non-fiction and clearly a lot of different interests from the booksellers I think that were reflected in the books that were stocked within that section, so that was really interesting to have a browse through. There was also quite a few local nods which I really enjoyed, so there was a really lovely book about bookshops that I will show you later because I bought it. <laughs> that was really nice. And just generally nice little personal features around the shop with the books selected which I really enjoyed and I think that that is one of the perks of indies is that you can let that shine through. And then when it came to the general fiction section I was really impressed. I think for the fact that we essentially had one wall of adult fiction and it was a it was a decent sized wall there was quite a lot of range there there was lots of different genres you could tell that they were trying to cater for lots of different types of readers and i think they did a really good job of that so i gave them four out of five for book selection onto the books that i bought so the one that i had never heard of before is the imaginary lives of james punek i'm going to check the pronunciation of that one and this is by tina macaretti first off i love the cover and I love the bag. I mean this instantly draws me in for that reason, but let me read you the blurb. James Ponecki is a young Maori orphan raised by missionaries with a burning desire to travel and explore the world. When an English artist on a tour of New Zealand invites James to return home with him, the boy eagerly accepts and agrees to become a living exhibit at the Artist London show. By day, James dresses in full tribal outfit, being stared at and prodded and examined by paying visitors. By night, he is free to explore the city, but anything can happen to a young New Zealander on the savage streets of Victorian London, and James is unprepared for the wonders, dangers and unearthed secrets that await. I think this sounds really interesting and very unique to anything I've read before. That's why I wanted to pick this one up. Also the bookseller told me that they believe they well, they were, were understanding that Taika Waititi is making a film adaptation of this but they said they haven't heard anything about that for a while but that makes me even more intrigued by this. So this is the first book that I bought. Then the second book which is one I had seen around but hadn't really picked up or knew what it was about is In the Miso Soup by Roy Murakami. Now this one is a very short strange horror-esque novel. The bookseller said that it starts slower and then suddenly everything hits at once. So <laughs> the blurb for this one. It's just before New Year and Frank, an overweight American tourist, has hired Kenji to take him on a guided tour of Tokyo's nightlife. But Frank's behaviour is so odd that Kenji begins to entertain a horrible suspicion. His client may in fact have murderous desires. Although Kenji is far from innocent himself, he unwillingly descends with Frank into an inferno of evil, from which only his 16-year-old girlfriend Yun can possibly save him. It sounds very interesting. I think the reviews swayed me on this one as well. There is no shortage of terrors in this novel. Atmosphere predominates and the claustrophobia of the back streets of Tokyo is intensely imagined. It just sounds interesting, oozes darkness and ambiguity and reads like a cross-pacific bullet train. I said I wanted fast-paced tension. I think this is going to give it to me. Also it's very short so I feel like it's going to pack a punch if it's it's got those kind of reviews. So I'm very intrigued by this. This will be the book that I'm reading in this vlog so I will let you know my thoughts. They will be spoiler free but I will be starting this one later today. I also bought this. This has been on my wish list for ages. This is Bookshop Tours of Britain by Louise Bolland. Now I am obviously filming this series over the next year. Hopefully if you guys like this I will do a season two of it, whatever it would be called. I will do it into 2024 as well and do another 10 bookshops if, if you like it, if you'd like more. But this I thought could give me even more ideas, not only places I could visit, but also of tours in certain areas I could do. I love the fact that I just opened it on a random page and it was Mr. B's in Bath, which is one of my favorite indies. I am excited. I love the fact that you can do this by location and hang on, let me, let me find a page example. It basically gives you potential driving routes to be able to go to these bookshops or like kind of just shows them on a map if you wanted to try and tour them all over a couple of days. 
I love the idea of this so much. So this makes me very happy. So I picked this up. I think in the last video I did as well, I bought a book about bookshops. So that's accidentally become a theme. But at the moment, Pigeon Books has a total score of 17.5. So I think this book basically hinges whether it's going to come out on top at the moment out of the two books that, shops that I've been to. But I will let you know my thoughts as I read this and then my final score for this and the final rating for Pigeon Books. Before I go, I got some book post and I need to show it because oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. If you do not want to see spoilers for the Fairy Loot Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo special edition, then look away, go to this timestamp, I will be done showing it, but holy crap, this book arrived today. I, I unboxed it as soon as I got home. I was on the fence about whether to order this or not. This is one of my favourite books. I read it back in 2018. I need to reread it. I can't remember it as well as I would like to. It is phenomenal. Taylor Jenkins reads. Oh, I'm watching Daisy Jones and the Six at the moment, having read that book in 2019, maybe. And oh my God, like, honestly, the writing is amazing. The show for Daisy Jones is just phenomenal. I, I love it so much, I'm trying to soak it up so slowly. But anyway, this edition, oh my gosh. This is the Fairy Loot edition and I was on the fence about ordering this because it just wasn't, I wasn't really sure. It, it doesn't have the dress on it and that was something that in my head I was like, I, I can't see the cover without the dress, but oh my gosh. It's so friggin' beautiful. So this is the front cover. It's so classy and stunning and the green. And the gold, oh, my favourite part is the back. I love this quote so much. Never let anyone make you feel ordinary. I just think this is beautiful. So I'm very happy. I'm very happy. That's the, that's the scores as things stand at the moment. 20.5 to beat. We're currently at 17.5. Let's see how this book comes out. This book is so friggin' weird. It literally went from zero to five and then five to 100 in the space of about 10 to 15 pages. The start was very slow, which the bookseller in Pigeon Books did say to me. And they did say, once it gets going, it's like everything is thrown at you. But it's really weird, really, really weird. Not necessarily in a good way. There is some real acts of aggression and violence in this book, as you would guess there would be from the blurb of it. But they're things that I'm like, oh, that's happening. Okay. I don't really mind reading things that are a bit more gory and bloody in places, but I do think that there's certain elements where I'm like, okay, I don't really know what I'm getting from this because enjoyment isn't the right word. It's definitely a shock factor. And I think that is probably the appeal of this book, that it's a book that's going to make you feel that shock and probably at times repulsion. I don't think I can say repulsion is an attractive reason to read a book, is it? <laughs> Not at all. The shock factor I can get. But there's just this like morbid sense about this book, um, more so than I expected there to be. So that that's my current thoughts and feelings. I'm not loving it. I'm not disliking it, but I'm not enjoying it. It's more that I'm just like, what the hell is happening? It's more a high level of intrigue as to where it's gonna go. But I think the fact that the blurb kind of outlines the direction the plot's gonna take more so than I think like, it, it, what the blurb says is that Kenji, who is the main character, is far from in innocent himself. He unwillingly descends with Frank into an inferno of evil from which only his 16-year-old girlfriend, Yun, can possibly save him. I feel like from saying that, that kind of gives us an indication as to the direction the book's going to take. So the whole time I've been reading it, that kind of has been in the back of my head. And I think that's kind of taken away a little bit. Of, of the plot for me. But I've got about 30 pages left. I had to stop reading it last night because I was just trying to chill and this is not a book to chill to. So I'll let you know when I finished it. It's currently Monday and I want this video live tomorrow. So in true, true Beth fashion, I am still, still reading this. So I need to finish it later today. I'll let you know what I give it as a final rating. I finished this book. Finished it last night. It's currently Tuesday. This is a very weird and graphic book. And whilst I don't mind dark themes and I very much knew it had that going into it. I just didn't enjoy this reading experience and I didn't take anything positive from it and I think I was trying to find those positive things and they just weren't there. This might be for you if you like incredibly vividly graphic reads that don't really hold back and are very violent and aggressive and also sexually violent as well, then 
go for this. This is pinned as a dark thriller. Dark it definitely is. I didn't find it thrilling. I felt the pacing was so slow at the start that when it did pick up I was just like oh my god finally but it still it, it never felt like it was particularly gripping and that was what I wanted from this book. I actually I was looking at the reviews on Goodreads and I found a review that I think spoke to to what I thought of this book. So this is Raza's review. It says a short but boring read. It's like watching paint dry for two hours with a few splashes of blood in the middle. That like just I mean the, the review goes on but that that first part I was just like yes that's um that is exactly how I felt. I think I was trying to enjoy it more and I just found it really boring pretty much. I wasn't enjoying it. I didn't want to pick it up. I just wanted to finish it so I could tell you about it. I gave it two out of five stars. So this means that the overall rating for Pigeon Books is a 19.5 out of a possible 25 points. And that is including the extra two points from the two star rating I gave in the Miso Soup. So Blue Bear Bookshop got 20.5. So that means Blue Bear Bookshop is just about in the lead at the moment. 19.5 is still a very good score. And this is just kind of extra bonus points anyway, because obviously a bookseller's recommendation isn't really yeah, it's, it's not fair to completely base what a bookshop is like based on whether or not I liked a book because everybody's got their own personal taste. So this is very much bonus points. Like the main bulk of the points is from everything else from the experience within the bookshop. So overall they got a 17.5 and then this brought them up with some bonus points to a 19.5. So that is it for episode two of Cover to Cover, the search for the best indie bookshop. I really hope you enjoyed it. I'm already planning episode three, so I'm really looking forward to going there. If you ever have any recommendations or places that you would like to see me feature, please do let me know. Obviously I am restricted slightly by location, but I will try and take them into consideration. And if it's not somewhere I visit this year, hopefully next year. So thank you very much for watching episode two of cover to cover if you did enjoy this video please do give it a thumbs up as i said comment down below any recommendations or if you have been to pigeon books or if you've got any book recommendations for me as well let me know down below you can also subscribe to more of my face on your feed and hit the little bell icon to be notified when i post you can find links down below to my patreon where i post lots of extra content and also my online shop thank you so much for watching keep smiling and stay positive